Hello and welcome to Get a Little Creative. I'm Becky Ferentz. I'm Jen Hadfield. And I'm Heather Mann. We're here to share the coolest craft ideas, the best creative blogs, and simple projects that anyone can do. Today we're talking about fabric crafting and we have Tam from SoDangCuteCrafts.com. Hi. Hi guys. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good to have you. Yeah. Okay, so I want to talk first. You're probably most known. Would you say you're most known for your crafting with the stars? Yeah. Okay, so it's a series. You do tell us a little bit about it. Well, what we do is anyone can audition. They okay. submit a project, and through an elimination process, the top 12 are selected, and they get paired up with Blog Land stars. Oh, okay. And, and we've been stars, all three of us. Yes, yeah. all three. Yeah. So it's a blogging, it's a blogging crafting, blogging competition. Yes, okay. and then they have four weeks where there's a theme given and they have to create something that week and then readers get to vote and the top people move on each week until the final week has one final champion. That's so fun yeah, and there I have been that. so many really great crafts in Crafting with the Stars yes. that have come out of that. It's what I love amazing. too is a lot, it's a lot of times it's smaller bloggers so you get to see new talent mm -hmm. and you get to um, you know, feature people that you know, don't have a ton of traffic and really right. kind of gives them, you know, ups their blog a little bit. Yeah, and you discover so much yeah, talent absolutely. out there. Cool. Yeah, the well, part. let's talk about some of her, your projects that you've yes. done. Okay. Um, I love your refashion. This little skirt is just darling. <laughs> Thank you. Is that you with your little knee like uh, all? Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. <laughs> so tell, tell us, what was this to begin with? This is well, a refashion, right? Yes, I found the cutest skirt in Charlotte Roos. Um, but it was about two feet shorter than that skirt. <laughs> and So how did you do that? So I just wanted to knock it off, mm -hmm. essentially, and so I got some fabric and experimented to make my own skirt that so, was a, a little longer. So did you add these ruffles? These ruffles? I were... did. That's actually okay. tulle underneath. Oh, so it's, it kind of kicks out mm -hmm. a little bit. That's to add cute. a little a little more dimension That's to amazing. it. So do you have you done a lot of refashions? Is that one of the things that you love to do or what do you love well, to do? Well mostly I love to sew. Okay. It's just something that m clicks and makes sense for me and okay. so I mostly sew for my kids. Oh, and this nice. was the first thing I've ever made for myself. Yeah. <laughs> so projects. it was that. fun. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of your kids, we have this other project here, which is a really cool idea for teaching your kids some things. So tell me about this project. Okay, we call it our family motto sign. Okay. Um, my husband and I were trying to think of certain values we wanted to teach our kids. So we've got some younger kids, and so we wanted to teach them something that wasn't too overwhelming, something they could remember. So mm -hmm. we came up right. with four words that we thought we could integrate into our home that we really wanted them to learn. And okay. is that a we vinyl project or did you paint that? It's actually a stencil. Oh um, I made a, the stencil with vinyl. Um, I tried contact paper, but it didn't quite seem to adhere to the okay. wood tightly enough. And so I um, went with vinyl and it worked out a lot better. Cool. Or you could print like it, that. you could print it on your printer and maybe decoupage it to oh, a frame definitely. or something else. Yeah, and you could do vinyl too. I just happen to have those colors of paint on yeah. hand. So but. whatever you like to do, you can pretty much customize this project mm -hmm. for. Okay, and I picked the mother of all projects. This was your, <laughs> you said, your, one of your harder projects because yes. you've like pretty much DIY the entire room based on the color scheme I was wearing today. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. She chose yellow and gray, which I love. Can you tell us a little bit about like what was your inspiration for this? Well, I sort of have a huge um, crush on yellow. Okay. It's my favorite color. It's just bright and happy. And my husband's not it's so like a much. Jen's over there, like, yeah, yeah like it's happy. It. Uh -huh. yeah, we're all happy. <laughs> my husband would have never let me do our bedroom yellow, so I did the guest bedroom okay. yellow. Did you do that quilt too? I did. It's oh actually a word. duet wow. cover. That's beautiful That's and nice. looks complex. <laughs> it's not too bad, actually. You just wing it. But it I there's don't... stripes, and the back is just a flat sheet. Okay. So. Okay, so you have Great. a project for us today that you're going to show us a little bit later. Can you just give us a sneak peek of that? Yeah, it's actually. A decorative throw pillow. Um, again, something I saw in a store and wanted to knock off on fun. my own. So okay, cool. it should be fun. We're excited to see it and we will be right back with Tam's um, pillow project. Hi, 
Hi, I'm here with Tam from SoDangCuteCrafts.com. Hi. And she has designed a fun project for us. It's a zigzag ruffle pillow. So can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration for your pillow? Sure. I was walking through a home decor store um, and had my kids with me. And I saw this cute pillow and I wanted to stop and look at it. But of course, they were throwing a fit. So right. I just snapped a quick <laughs> picture with my cell phone and went home and was like, oh, I could just make that. So, so you recreated something you were inspired we went for. <laughs> by a, a store. Okay, cool. So let's just jump in. Tell me where we start. All right. Well, first with any pillow, you need a front and a back. So I cut two pieces and you want your pieces to be an inch smaller than your actual pillow form just so you get a nice firm, fluffy pillow. Because I would, I would have thought it was an inch larger. So that's a good tip yes, to remember. Yes. So even with seam allowances, you go an inch smaller. Just when you stuff just it in, it it's, it's really full. Mm -hmm. Um, so once we get our front and back, we are going to mark the front piece with one inch lines. Um, and with these one inch lines, we're going to take some fabric strips. And we got these by, I just made little clips at the top of some fabric. And if you just tear it, it gives it that nice frayed edge. So every inch you clip. And then these lines you drew with disappearing marker? You want to do it with disappearing. This just so you could actually see it is actually permanent marker. Okay. With a disappearing, you Don't won't be that. able to see it. Well, it's really gonna be As hidden well. underneath anyway too. Yes. So if, if you, another thing you can use is washable marker. If you yes. have that with your kids at home, I use that for sewing a lot. So with each line, you're gonna take a strip and just have it sit right on the middle of the line. And then we go over to the sewing machine, we're just gonna stitch it all the way down. So eventually, once we have all of our strips stitched on, we come with a piece that's just like this. Okay, so when you you lay the strip over and then you sew right down where you drew that line. Yes. Okay. Yep. Then we're going to mark every two inches on this sewn piece. Okay. And we're going to be taking all of our pieces and kind of folding them up like this. Okay. And then we'll along the line. So you'd have a marked line yes, here, we'll and then you two fold inch it. Line, okay. And then we'll just stitch down there so that it sews that seam up. Okay. And what we want to do is sew all the same direction first. So like on this piece, here we might want there. Okay. So on this piece, I have sewn right here and right here. So you you sew and then you skip a line and then you sew to the next yes. line. Yes. Okay. So once we get all the same direction done. We're going to flip it around and then we fold the fabric in the opposite direction. Okay. So it's easier to just sew in all one direction and skip lines and then yes. flip it back around. Okay, yep. that's good so to know. So then once you sew it up, then you get this nice twisted, Little well, the zigzag <laughs> effect <laughs> of it. Yep. Okay, cool. So you leave this, the strips unfinished and the, the, um, Fraying edge is just kind of a neat little textural element. Yeah, with the, element. With the line sewn every two inches, it's not going to fray as much. Even if you throw this in the wash, it'll still be all right. You'll just have little threads you might need to pick off. But Okay, so and you, you can do it out of pretty much any fabric. You used something really simple on this white pillow. Yes, I used muslin on this white one. It, it's just a really light fabric, and so I, I liked how airy it kind of was. Mm -hmm. and, and these were just in cotton. So. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for sharing your fun project and join us again next time as we get a little creative.